All right, welcome back to my lecture. Um, I want to discuss a little bit more on sequences. And um, the example that I want to give you is the Fibonacci sequence. And the reason why I'm giving you the sequence is because my last example is that the examples that I gave you in the past have been have had a nice formula for every single sequence. And you just plug it in into that formula and you get the output. Okay. And this one is not as easy because there's no explicit formula for this sequence. So this one is called the Fibonacci. Okay. And this Fibonacci sequence, it starts with A sub 1. It is 1. And A sub 2 is also 1. But now there's a recurrence relation between the previous terms of the sequences. So the relationship in the sequence is that A sub n is equal to the sum of a sub n minus 1 plus a sub n minus 2. And this is called a recurrence relation. Okay. So this Fibonacci sequence, if I want to calculate a sub 3, for example, I have to plug it into this formula. And I'm going to use a sub 2. Remember, n is equal to 3 here. So this will be a sub 2 plus a sub 1. And this will be equal to 1 plus 1. That is equal to 2. Okay. If I want to calculate a sub 4, well, this will say take the pre two previous terms, a sub 3 plus a sub 2, and this will be equal to 2 plus 1. That's equal to 3. If I want to calculate a sub 5, this will say a sub 5 is equal to the two previous terms and adding them up. So this will be 3 plus 2 that will be equal to 5. Okay, And if I want to get to a sub 10, well, that means I have to calculate all the terms in between 10 and, uh, and, and 2, because we're given 1 and 2. So I have to know all the prior terms. Now, the, I'll just, as a side remark, I'll say that these recurrence relationships have a natural relationship with computer science, especially with like for loops where you recursively do things. So they're a very natural thing, these sequences. Okay. And it says that we have to execute through the entire loop to calculate any of the individual terms. Whereas if we had a formula, there's no need to do, do the loop. We can just plug it in, execute it, get our answer. Okay. I'm not going to dwell on that too much. But now I'm going to introduce us to something that we're going to talk about more of. And this is a special type of sequence. Okay. In fact, it's so special, it has its own name. So in fact, this is going to be a major theme. This is called or related to a series. Okay. And this is going to be a very major a big 
big concept that we're going to deal with for many, many sections and a major theme throughout uh, calculus. Okay. So here's going to be the sequence. Okay. A sub 1, this is going to be 1. A sub 2, this is going to be half of the previous one. A sub 3 is going to be 1 fourth. You could also write this as 1 half squared. Okay. A sub 4, this is going to be an eighth, half of the previous, or 1 half cubed. A sub 5, you've probably guessed what the pattern is. This is going to be 1 16th, and this is going to be 1 over 1. Uh, one half to the fourth power, etc. Okay, so this is the sequence, and there's going to be a series associated with this. The series is going to be a cumulative function, it adds everything up. So S sub 1, this is going to be 1. S sub 2, this is going to be 1 plus 1 half, okay? S sub 3, this is going to be 1 plus, I take the 1 half, every term less than or equal to 3, I add it up, plus 1 fourth. S sub 4, I take everything prior to it. This is going to be 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus I take a sub 4, which would be 1 eighth. Here's going to be the, ser the fifth term of the series. This is going to be 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth. And one thing that you should notice is, hey, this sequence, there's a general formula for it is going to be 1 half. Each of these is 1 half. The fifth term is to the fourth power, 1 half to the fourth power. The fourth term is 1 half to the third power. The third term is 1 half to the second power. So it's 1 less than the, the, the term itself. So this will be 1 half to the n minus 1. Now, this series, you know, you should... Notice that S sub n, if I wanted a nice little formula for it, this series, and by the way, these are called partial terms of the series, is going to be 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth. And I can't possibly count every term between uh, the first one and the nth term, so I'll stop at the nth term. The nth term is going to be 1 half to the n minus 1. Now, there's a shorthand to write add everything up when there's a nice little formula for the terms that we're adding up. This will be 1 half to the n minus 1. Uh, excuse me, let me not put I did one bad practice, which is I should have something other than n here, because that's going to be where it stops. So this is going to be from k equals 1 to n. And so this index means plug in k equals 1, that gives me 1. Then take k equals 2, that gives me 1 half, add it to 1. And take k equals 3, that gives me a fourth, add it to all the stuff that we've added so far, and then keep doing that repetition and add it and stop at n, and at n we get 1 half to the n minus 1 and add it to all the other stuff. So these, these two lines mean the same thing. That's shorthand for writing out... Uh, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus dot dot dot, but now I don't have to write dot dot dot. This is the summation notation that we've seen in calculus, right? 
and stop at one half to the n minus one. Okay. Okay. So one thing that we should notice. One is that limit uh, is that a sub n converges. And let me just tell you why a sub n converges. Okay. A sub n is convergent. Two. And let me, let me actually expand upon why a sub n is convergent. Let's calculate its limit. Okay. So a sub n is convergent, and let's say because this limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n, this is the limit as n goes to infinity, of one half to the n minus one, the same as this limit of one over two to the n minus one. Okay, and this is one over a denominator that keeps getting larger and larger, so this limits to zero. Okay. So the second thing that we could notice is that the sequence, so by the way, S sub n is a series, but it's also a sequence, is a special form of a sequence. It gets its own name, it's called a series. Okay, but it is just a list of numbers. That's the only requirement that it needs to be a sequence. So one thing that I'm going to notice is that S sub n is an increasing sequence. Okay. Now, the individual terms that we add up are the sequence A sub n, but S is called a series, and a series always means, hey, add up all the previous terms. That's what a series refers to, okay? So one thing is that it's increasing. If we knew it was bounded, we could be done, and we could prove that this series converges, okay? So three, Asking if S sub n converges asks this. It asks if this limit as n goes to infinity of S sub n is finite or not. But this is equal to this limit as n goes to infinity of a uh, not yeah, of n goes to infinity of the summation from k equals 1 to n of 1 half to the k minus 1. Now, notice that this n corresponds to the uh, summation, the upper limit in the summation notation. And this, excuse me, let me write, write this down. This often gets replaced just the way that improper integrals work. This gets replaced with this. These three are interchangeable. This will be the sum from one to infinity of one half to the k minus one. It asks if this is convergent. Okay. This term right here, there's going to be many different things inside of this. Instead of having one half to the k minus one, you know, generally this is referred to as the summation from k equals one to infinity of a sub k. And this, so here a sub k 
is just this one half to the k minus one, and this is referred to as an infinite series. And you're asked if the infinite series converges or diverges. Well, since we know this particular series is increasing, if we knew it was bounded, we'd be done. Okay, I'm not gonna go the bounded route, you can, but instead, I'm going to talk more about this particular series, okay? So now, the topic is, okay, so now we're going to determine if the infinite series And by the way, these S sub 5s, S sub 1 through S sub 5, and S sub n, they're called partial series because they don't go to infinity. Okay? If the infinite series summation from k equals 1 to infinity of this 1 half to the k minus 1 is convergent or not. Now I want to talk about this particular series. So there's going to be this is going to be quite a digression, and we're going to need to compile a few facts to answer this question. Okay, so here's a few facts. Okay, one, the first thing that I want to do is I just want to know and tell you some general information. This series k equals 1 to infinity of 1 half to the k minus 1. This is called a geometric series. Okay. And, you know, I think this geometric series, it has a lot of uh, love. Okay. And... This is a very important type of series. Okay. Here's going to be my second fact. I'm going to look at, let's look at S sub 3. Okay. And I just want to determine the value of S sub 3. So S sub 3, this is 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth. Notice each term that I add is half the previous term. That's what's referred to as a geometric series. Not that it's half, but that it's a, a multiple of the previous one. And by the way, this relates to something called Zeno's paradox. Okay, And Zeno's paradox says, hey, if I shoot an, an arrow or I shoot a bullet towards an object, hey, that... As, and Zeno originally phrased this in terms of arrows, but we'll use bullets. That bullet, it has to travel half the distance to the object, and then half the remaining distance to the object, and half of the remaining distance to the object, and so on, infinitely many times. So the question is, how does this bullet ever get there if it has to keep traveling half of a half of a half of the remaining distance and that is the paradox okay but the math actually resolves the paradox and it says it gets there okay i know a shocker okay now let's return to this s sub 3 i'm going to take this quantity that i called s sub 3 and i'm going to multiply it by one half well, 1, that first term, multiplied by 1 half, is going to be 1 half now. Now I multiply 1 half, the second term, by 1 half, that gives me 1 fourth. And then I'm going to multiply 1 fourth, the very last term, by 1 half. Okay? And that's going to give me 1 eighth. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract these two terms. I can put a zero here since it doesn't change anything. And I'm going to take S sub 3 minus 1 half times by S sub 3. I subtract the first column 
this column minus this column, that's going to be 1. I take the second column right here, that's going to be a 0. I take the third column, that's going to be another 0. And I'm going to add a 0 here. Then I subtract these, and I'm going to get minus 1 eighth. Well, would you look at that? Um, I'm going to get 1 minus 1 eighth. Okay. And if I notice on the left-hand side, everything has S sub 3. That's the unknown value. And this is by 1 minus 1 half. So I can solve for S sub 3. That's just called doing division. This is going to be 1 minus 1 half to the third power. Okay. Divided by 1 minus 1 half. Now, if I had to guess, S sub n, then, would be equal to 1 minus 1 half to the nth power. Notice the power matches the subscript. Minus, uh, divided by 1 minus 1 half. Okay. And so if I have this nice little formula, I can take the limit of this, okay? So let, let's prove this guess. So, so I'm on three, not four, okay? Let's prove the guess. Okay. And if I had to prove it, hey, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look up what is S sub n. I have a little formula for it. It's 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth, okay? So it's going to be 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus so on. And I'm going to have 1 half to the n minus 2. And the very last term is going to be 1 half to the n minus 2. 1. And one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write that 1 fourth as 1 half squared. Okay, so everything's going to be a power of 1 half. Okay. Okay. So now if I take this S sub n, just like I did the S sub 3, I'm going to multiply everything by 1 half. So this 1 it's going to become 1 half. The 1 half becomes 1 half squared. The 1 half squared goes into the ellipses. There's a 1 half third there. Now, the previous term is going to be 1 half to the n minus 3. When that gets multiplied by 1 half, this will be 1 half to the n minus 2. This will be 1 half to the n minus 1. That comes from the previous term. So the very last term is going to be 1 half to the n. And I'm going to put a 0 here because it doesn't change anything. And I'm going to put a 0 here. Now, if I subtract columns, I'm going to have s sub n minus 1 half s sub n because, I mean, I can... I can subtract in any order, so I'm going to just subtract like that. That's going to be 1. This is going to be cancel. That's going to be 0. This is going to cancel. It's going to be 0. I think everything in the ellipses is going to cancel. I'm going to come here. I'm going to get 0. I'm going to get 0 from this term. And then I'm going to have minus 1 half to the n. So now... If I summarize, everything has S sub n on this side, and this is going to be 1 minus 1 half equals 1 minus 1 half to the n. So S sub n, the nth term of the partial sequence, or partial series, which is a sequence, has this formula. And it says I don't have to calculate every single prior term in this recurrence relation. I can just plug it into this formula. OK. 
Okay. So notice, so here's the last thing. So this limit, as n goes to infinity, uh, let me just back up a second here. So this infinite series, the summation from k equals 1 to infinity of the summation of 1 half to the k minus 1, this is equal to this limit as n goes to infinity of the summation from k equals 1 to n of this 1 half to the k minus 1. This term was called s sub n. And we have a nice little formula for s sub n. This is this limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus 1 half divided by, and I apologize, I made a tiny mistake in writing things down. Okay, that's not to the nth power. But here, the numerator is. So that's to the n. So that's to the nth power divided by 1 minus 1 half. And finally, we compute this limit using the rules of limits, right? It will be that, because that's the only thing that has the n. And this will be 1 divided by 1 minus 1 half. Okay. And that is 2. Okay. So the we've calculated the limit of this series, this infinite series, and we've shown that this series, which is a form of a sequence, is convergent. So we'll just say the infinite series converges. Okay. Now let me give you uh, uh, just a few remarks on this. This infinite series, here's the general form of a geometric series. Its general form is going to be the summation from k equals 1 to infinity of a multiplied by r to the k. Okay. And this is going to have a limit. It's going to be converge. Okay, so there's two scenarios. It converges to a over 1 minus r if r is less than 1, and it diverges if r is bigger than 1. Okay, So this is a very special series, and an instance where its partial series make a sequence. Okay, The limit of the sequence is the infinite series, and it converges to this depending on the value of r, and diverges otherwise. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. And please, please remember um, remember this geometric series. Before I leave you, there is one last note. And this is very important. The series converges. means that this limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n has a finite limit. But this does not mean the series. 
summation from n k equals 1 to infinity of a sub n is convergent. And this is a very important fact. Okay. Okay, so let me really, really emphasize this. Okay. And you might be asking, hey, like, what do you mean? Well, let me give you an example. The series a sub n equals to n over n plus 1 is convergent. Since this happens, okay, limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1. We can use L'Hopital's here, and we can see that this will be this limit as n goes to infinity. Take the derivative of the top, that's 1. The derivative of the bottom is also 1, so the limit is 1. Okay. And one other thing that we can see is I just list some of these terms like a sub 1. This is going to be 1 half. a sub 2. This is going to be 2 thirds, right? a sub 3. This is going to be 3 fourths. It keeps getting bigger and bigger, right? And it limits to 1. So a sub n. This is always bigger than or equal to 1 half. Now, the corresponding series is this. The corresponding series is this. It's S sub n, this is the partial series, is going to be the summation from k equals 1 to n of a sub k. Okay. The summation from k equals 1 to n of um, k over k plus 1. Okay. And if I just write this out, when k is 1, we'll get 1 half plus two-thirds, plus three-fourths, all the way up to n. So there are n terms, right? And the nth term will look like this. And this is bigger than or equal to one-half, plus one-half, plus one-half, plus dot, 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 plus one-half. But these, there are n of these. So this will be n over 2, just by using the adding it up corresponds to n over 2. Okay, So this limit as the, the infinite series, okay, so the infinite series, is given by this. is the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k over k plus 1, which is equal to this limit as n goes to infinity of the summation from k equals 1 to n of k over k plus 1. And by what we just did, this is bigger than or equal to this limit as n goes to infinity of n over 2, which is infinity. So it is also, so it is divergent, not also, it's just divergent because we computed its limit.
So it's a divergent series, but the sequence converges. So my key point is that the convergence or divergence of the sequence, okay, does not tell us if the series converges or diverges. And that's a very important fact to know. So that was my last remark. I want you to keep this in mind and also remember the geometric series. Thank you very much.